Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. This is Her Empowered Life and I am so happy that you're back in my channel. As promised, May is Mental Health Awareness Month and so we are going to talk about um, you know, mental health as well as raising awareness as regards to mental health. Um, and we want to continue to reduce the stigma of having those conversations regarding mental health. So I think uh, May is definitely a great time for us to have those conversations, not on a surface level, level but on a deeper level. Um, I do have some notes here, so if I look down, it's because I want to make sure that I'm covering everything. So <clears throat> one question we wanted to talk about is really today's focus topic is what causes mental health. There's so many different things that could be a cause for mental health. Uh, one of it is genetics. So genetically, um, you know, people are more susceptible to mental health if they have a, an experience of a family member that has mental health issues. So I can personally share, when I was much younger, um, when I was a kid, I didn't really understand like what my mom was going through. But then, obviously, as I grew older and have experienced it myself, um, I've come to recognize that what she was going through is um, depression. And so depression, I think, runs in my family, um, not necessarily because, um, you know, not, not just because of outside factor, because my mom didn't really have an easy life, but she definitely um, has issues with... Uh, her emotional mental health and she don't really talk much about it all I can see is you know days where she decides to stay home because she isn't feeling well but she isn't really feeling well uh, physically I think it's more of a emotional mental uh, situation that she's going through but it wasn't really talked much about so um, it's definitely something that um, later on in life that I realized that it could be that she is suffering from depression or anxiety or uh, mental health issues. Um, <clears throat> so I would say if it comes, you know, if there is people in your family that has uh, mental health issues, you're more likely to be susceptible to it. Not everybody um, that has people who are in a family that suffers from mental health uh, means that you're going to be having the same issues but it is most likely that you would be more prone to uh, you know to to those causes and the other thing is environment so living in a stressful environment um, does contribute to mental health issues so you know a while back I personally um, was going through a very stressful uh, time in my life where um, my workplace situation was very toxic and it has caused a lot of um, you know sadness and anxiety and stress huge huge stress in my life and I didn't realize that um, it affected me so much but uh, it did start to take a toll in my life when I find myself uh, very consumed with um, just thoughts of how stressful it is to go to work, um, that I don't enjoy it, that it was hard to wake up, it was hard to find joy. I think that's the main thing. It's, it's hard to find joy uh, in what I was doing because it was so toxic and um, Regardless of what I do, even if I try to put on a front, uh, it, it, that sadness doesn't go away. So stressful situations can contribute to mental health issues um, just by being in that uh, toxic and stressful environment. Um, some, some examples could be if someone is living in a poverty situation, you know, money is definitely a huge source of stress. So people who are living in poverty or they are, they are coming from a, an abusive background with abusive partner or abusive family, that does put huge stress um, <clears throat> on your mental health uh, just because those are things that you can't quite necessarily control, you know, the environment, but you are in that environment so much that it starts to um, create that stress in you where you feel like there is no way out, you feel like you're trapped, 
you feel like there isn't joy in your situation. The, the, the easiest way for me to be able to explain this is just that lack of joy. You know, um, simple things don't bring you joy anymore. You start not being able to recognize yourself in the environment. You find yourself blending in and um, you find yourself very tired uh, of being in that situation, but you are not sure of how to get out of that situation. Those are very stressful times uh, where you feel very out of control. And I think as human beings, we like to be in control of what's happening to us and around us. And so not having that, that sense of control could contribute to that stress level that you're experiencing. Um, I think there are, you know, different other reasons like financial issues to expel, uh, death of a loved one, uh, divorce. I personally had been through divorce before and it is a very, uh, stressful time in my life, you know, especially when everything that you're familiar with is going away and everything is changed in an instant. Um, it can be a very stressful uh, time where you are not sure of who you are because, you know, when you're in a marriage, your spouse define you, your uh, family define you, your children define you. And so when you are getting out of that identity of being in a marriage, that could be a very stressful situation, most, mostly because you feel lost, right? Where do I go from here? What does it mean? Um, what's going to happen, right? A lot of the fear of the unknown um, and you don't feel anchored. I think that that um, foundation of feeling safe is taken away from you, just like when you lose a loved one, when you have financial problems or when you have a chronic medical situation that's happening or something that's traumatic that had happened. It's it's kind of like the sense of safety that you are used to experiencing is taken away from you. And so you feel very lost and you feel very unsafe. And when you are feeling unsafe, the dominant experience is fear. And fear can do a lot of things to your head. And I think there's a lot of stigma when it comes to talking about mental health because you know in the past, when, when, when I hear the word mental health, or uh, I, I kind of associate it with someone that's crazy, going crazy, right? I mean, in the simplest sense. But um, the definition of mental health really is a person's condition with regard to their psychological and emotional well-being. So really, it's as simple as that. It's a person's condition as relates to how they are feeling inside psychologically and how they are feeling emotionally so <clears throat> it's really to me mental health is more of uh, understanding where you're at in this moment in terms of how you're feeling inside and how you're responding to it by how how you're feeling on the outside right like I said joy when you don't feel joy it's really your emotional response to how you're feeling inside. So, um, and I think in the past, I always feel like when you're mental health means you are crazy, like to the, to the super extreme of, you know, uh, you, this person is out of control, you know, they're like from the asylum or strapped up and, 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 and they, they just lose track of reality. And, um, but that's not true, right? The, the 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 sad thing about when I was going through my mental health crisis of feeling depressed and feeling helpless and hopeless is that people cannot see it, right? When you're sick, you know, when, you, when your nose is running or you're running a temp or, you, you know, you can see from the outside that you are not feeling good. You know, someone from the outside could see that you're not feeling good. But when you are suffering from mental health issues it's not something that is physical on the outside it's all happening on the inside mostly it's kind of your mind obsessing over the sadness that you're feeling or obsessing over the situations that you're in uh, or obsessing about you know whatever that has happened to you and 
<clears throat> feeling like you're trapped, feeling like you can't come out of that situation. And it seems like it's a, it's a very obsessive type of dwelling on the issue that you feel like you're constantly trapped in that sadness, that deep, deep, dark space of uh, hopelessness. And I think hopelessness is, 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 is a very sad thing to have to go through, right? And unfortunately, as human beings, we have to, you know, live life. We have to make the bills. We have to uh, have our responsibility, especially as women. We have to have responsibility as a mom. And when I was going through my depression, I was a high-functioning depression, uh, depressed person, meaning I can function like a normal person. I can put on a mask pretty easy. I can, um, you know, do my day-to-day -day as though nothing is happening on the outside. But every day, it's a struggle that people cannot see on the inside. You know, it, it's a struggle when you are mentally wiped out and tired. You you don't just feel tired um, physically, you feel tired mentally because your mind, like I said, is replaying and feeling and dwelling and your mind is constantly racing in its own way and nobody can see. Like I can tell you like my mind is racing right now. You can tell that my mind is racing, but my mind is racing, right? So it's like you're running a, a marathon in your head and even if you're sleeping, you're not getting like real rest because your mind is going and sometimes you get woken up with thoughts of uh, negativity, intense sadness and um, just feeling like, especially when I was going through my episode, it was, I feel, I feel trapped because I feel like... <clears throat> Why can't the whole world revolve around me, right? I mean, let's be real. The whole world don't revolve around me. But when you are in that feeling of depression or mental health, um, you know, state of depression, I feel like as a mom, I have a responsibility. So I couldn't really care for myself because my responsibility is to care for something much more than myself, which is my kid. So... Whether I feel tired, whether I feel like it, whether I feel like I'm, I'm excited, I'm not excited, I have to get up, I have to get out of bed, I have to get my kids ready for school, I have to get my, my uh, you know, I have to get them fed, I have to do the chores in the house, I have to do the dishes, I have to do the laundry, and it's like, this is a time where you really need to take time for yourself, meaning just for yourself. And I feel trapped because I feel like I couldn't do that because of my strong sense of responsibility. Of course, there are people who are depressed where they can't quite take care of themselves and so they can't take care of, um, you know, the people outside of them. And <clears throat> so there is like the high-functioning people, person who is depressed, and then there's ones who are like just mentally, you know, physically can't quite cope. I did get to the point where I was high functioning, able to put on a mask, do my day to day, to where I cannot control my emotions. The mask doesn't work anymore. And that's, I would say, like a complete like breakdown where I feel like the only energy or the only source of energy that I have, I can only do it for myself to keep myself alive and to keep myself well enough to live through the next day and um, <clears throat> um, why I wanted to share the causes of mental health is you know hopefully the things that I shared with you kind of br brings to mind or reminds you of maybe this and that that you're experiencing and maybe mental health has never come across in your mind that it's something that you're experiencing because you don't know what mental health means because your definition might be they're crazy. Someone who has mental health issues is someone that's crazy in an asylum strapped up. But that's not true. Um, m someone that has mental health issues could be going through the different things that I just mentioned. Hopelessness, uh, fatigue, um, helplessness, lack of energy. I mean, just all sorts of different things that is far off than someone that is completely crazy. So if you are experiencing something like that, it could be much more than what you think it is. Um, so 
I hope that what I shared today could maybe help you identify some of the emotional and psychological things that you're experiencing that is not outwardly pre present to other people, but it's something that um, is deeply affecting you on the inside and uh, begin your awareness of taking charge of those situations to get help that you need um, and to really understand like what this is about and, and how it's affecting you maybe on the inside and maybe that you need to, to source help to get yourself help that you need um, instead of thinking that I'm just tired. Maybe I'm just going through a phase of being sad or I'm just going through a phase of whatever. Maybe it's much, much more. In the next coming weeks, um, you know, the next coming videos, I'll be going over more around the definition of mental health, um, really diving into mental health genetics and how it's caused, maybe trauma could be a big cause of mental health. But today, I just want us to understand what causes mental health and to identify the signs of um, someone that is suffering from a mental health um, issue. Um, I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions or you need help or you love um, someone to help mentor you, uh, I'm a personal coach, uh, intuitive coach actually, and you can always check out my website and sign up for my discovery um, coaching session at www.herempoweredlife.com. If you like my channel and like what I'm sharing with you, please like, share, and subscribe for someone who might need help with identifying um, what's going on with their mental health and hopefully get help that way. Well, you have a good day and I talk to you soon.